Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you can be seated in his name with a shout. Oh, let's try that one more time. I said you can be seated in his name with a shout. Y'all trying to tell me y'all ain't got nothing else left in you. The devil is alive. Oh, you come on, come on here, somebody. I said we ought to be seated in his name with a shout. But you got to remember, honey, you a wailing woman. And the last thing you want the devil to think is that you, that you done turned around and decided to shut your mouth. Because every time you open up your mouth, you got to back him up. Come on here, somebody. I said every time you open your mouth and bless God, you back him up. And that's why you can't get tired. You can't get weary. You better let the devil know I'm going to still praise God. I'm still alive. God's got a word in here this morning. This morning for 
this great man of God and his wife, Bishop and Sarita Jakes. Why don't we put our hands together and honor the Lord for the man of God and the woman of God. Who God is so greatly using. I give honor to Pastor Claudette Copeland and to Evangelist Rita Twiggs and to Sister Cece Winans and to all of the so Pastor Turner and Valerie Boy and I think I see um, Sister Ripley. Why don't you come up here, Sister Ripley, please? Join us up here. Powerful woman of God. Amen, somebody. Just matter of fact, I think it's enough seats for all three of you all to come on, come on up. Bring your come on up. We always we don't know who people are, but some people have what what Dr. Turner and uh, Pastor Copeland describes as a quiet anointing. Sister Ripley has a sneaky anointing. She just started talking and all of a sudden everybody just all over the place. But we honor the Lord for great women and men of God because we're a team. And I don't know what they used to do, but this new group, we're a team. We play like a team. I, I don't know. That. We got some Michael Jordans and some Scotty Pippins and all the mother folk. Amen, somebody. And if you don't learn how to know your grade and to stay in your grade, then you'll find yourself having complications in ministry because you will find yourself working with another man's working papers. Somebody ought to say it's something right there. You find yourself working with another man's working papers. And when that happens, you will encounter the spirit of frustration and aggravation. And I think one of the things about ministry, though it is very complicated at times, and it only gets complicated because you're, and I want you to hear this when I say this, because in ministry, it's not your gift that is challenged. It is your character that is challenged. And I'm a firm believer that what a person does in the heat of a battle determines the type of spirit that person has. Amen, somebody. And so we're constantly challenged to do the right thing in the face of the enemy. And when you can overcome in your personal commitment to God, then to me that is true ministry. Because how many know that anybody can jump and shout you? And you'll always find somebody that you can get to stand on their feet while you're singing and while you're preaching. But guess what? You'll always find somebody to identify with whatever demon spirit you're operating in. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Because the devil got relatives. How many know that? Everything singing ain't the anointing. I wish I had a church in here this morning. Everything preaching is not of God. And the devil can find a group of people to follow his message. But I believe that the Lord is bringing the body of Christ to a point in this hour that he's allowing us to become fine-tuned as to what the true spirit of God is. God, I love you, Jesus. Because the true spirit of God is not just talent. Because like I said before, anybody can get you off of your seat. But the true anointing of God is the power that can get you up out of your mess. Come on, somebody. It's the power that can cause you to say no to the devil when ain't nobody watching. Come on here. See, the Holy Ghost said to me the other day in prayer, he said, many have the form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And he said to me, many have stolen my form. And he said, my form, Juanita, can get you on television. And my form can help you to write books. And my form can get you in the back room to meet all the famous preachers that you want to meet. And my form can get you to sit on TVN 
in and to help you to sell tapes. He said, but it's going to take my power to keep you where my form has taken you. Oh, come on here, somebody. And that's why you got a lot of folk that's doing a whole lot of stuff with the form of God, but they don't have the power of God because the power of God is the yoke breaking. It's the burden removing. It's the yoke destroying the power of God. And if ain't nobody got no testimony when you get through singing, that is not the anointing. If ain't nobody got no healing testimony after you got through preaching, that is not the anointing. But the anointing of God is the anointing and the power to deliver men out of sin, to stop Satan in his tracks. Do I have a witness in here tonight to call you to say yes to God and no to the devil? It causes a deliverance to happen in your spirit even when you're not expecting it now that's the anointing God I feel the Holy Ghost in here today go with me to Exodus because I feel like God want to say something to us today and there are our final words and that's why you gotta keep your spirit attentive right now because everything that God has done in your life Believe me when I tell you that the devil's got a plan. Y'all ain't saying that. See, let me help you with something. Right now, everybody's high. Oh, I wish I had a real church in here. Everybody high. Oh, the woman I lose. Oh, 1999 changed my life. Honey, oh, I've never been the same. Oh, girl, I slapped my neighbor so many times. Honey. I just feel the power of God. But see, understand something. You're not taking this auditorium home with you. Where all your crazy relatives is and all of the crazy folk that you work with, see the real test of what you got, it ain't even seen yet. Cause I didn't, oh listen, you in here crying and all this glory and speaking in tongues, but the real test is gonna come when you get back home. Because see, you're gonna find out that what should have hit your shield has hit your spirit. And that's gonna let you know that you don't have on the whole armor. What you got is excitement, but did you really get delivered? I sense when I woke up this morning that somebody got the wrong concept. So I gotta help you today. So we gonna do a old fashioned back home down south country storefront church read on because see back then in the old days now that's how i got saved i got i was raised in a read on church and, and see the reason why uh, uh i believe that my hope in god is as it is because we heard the word twice <laughs> And see, we stayed in church longer than anybody. And sometimes y'all be sitting there watching your watch. See, you stay in church longer than anybody. That's why you got more than anybody. Come on, it takes time to labor in the spirit of God to get a true deliverance. See, we living in a microwave age now where you won't smoke to blow on you. I mean, I, I, I get folk all the time. Can I have your handkerchief? This ain't gonna do nothing for you. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing in here. You gotta learn how to get up your face and labor in the spirit until God sets you free. Honey, come on. The day for getting in prayer lines is over with. Not, no, 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 baby. Not a prayer line. You got to learn how to travail in prayer and in deliverance and in this word for yourself. Come on, Sister Dupree. Read the Bible. Uh, start at, um, uh, start at the uh, Exodus 30 and 22. Are y'all ready? Now y'all can sit down because I can tell y'all ain't from no read on church. If y'all from a read on church, y'all wouldn't know we, we gonna be reading a long time. Come on mother, read the Bible. Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses saying, uh -huh. Take thou also unto thee uh -huh. principal spices of rear myrrh. Okay, hold on right there. He said, take thou also unto thee principal Spices, principal spices are, now watch this, they are necessary spices 
to, now what are we creating here? Printable spices because there is a, and I gotta take my time and say this, there is a mixture of, how can I put this Lord? Of an imitation of the real anointing that's going around. And people think that they can do anything, they can say anything, they can wear anything. Now y'all know I'm old fashioned, so y'all gotta go with this. I ain't, you know I ain't backing up here. <laughs> they can look any kind of way, see, see, and still say, I'm anointed. Wait, 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 that's the spirit of God. Well, see, I learned from, um, from, from Mother Boy, y'all don't know nothing about that, the 80 some year old woman, that there is a particular ingredient that helps to define what the true anointing is. See, some of us is not from the old school. Everybody just came in church in the last four, five years. You don't know nothing about travailing and, and what the old school was all about. Because a lot of that stuff they said, well, I, that's all they can take all that. And you know, yeah, yeah, that folk that going too far. And I just don't believe you gotta just do all that. Well, let me help you with what they were trying to do. See, if a person has already been to where you trying to get to, uh -huh, and there are certain spirits that have been attached to your old lifestyle, then there are certain clothes and outfits that used to identify with your old nature. Uh -huh. So what they say is, baby, though you are not delivered yet, you gotta take off the gray clothes. Because as long as you're wearing the clothes from your old nature, you're gonna keep attracting your old devils. <laughs> church was trying to do was until you get a real good hope in God it, watch this you know the scripture that says he that dwelt in the secret place of the most high shall abide in the shadow of the almighty God okay remember that scripture what they were trying to do back then mother is put you on a garment that would hide you <laughs> from the enemy so when the when watch this when one of them devils with a side hat and a gold tooth see you in the mall, they'll keep walking because though you're not delivered, you hear it. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. And see the anointing that is operating in a person's life, like we look at different people that we see that are that are powerful in ministry, because there is a season when the spirit of your character will catch up with your clothes. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing in here. See, because we don't have, uh, Darlene Bishop said it the other day, we don't have church mothers no more to say, baby, now that's too low. Just you, mama gonna put a pin right there for you because you don't want all your little stuff out, you know. You know, it, we don't have mothers that say, now don't you think you need a little safety pin in that split? It's just a little bit, little bit too high. And we call that old fashioned. No, baby, they are trying to make sure that you don't go back on your testimony because I don't know about y'all. Let me just help you with something. I, I can remember when the Lord spoke to me and said, one day I was getting dressed to go to the mall and I got all dressed up and we, we, we going somewhere with this. And I got, got myself together and I, um, put on, uh, uh, I had a cute little shirt on, just a regular shirt and, and my little sandals and stuff. And I had, had my, I was, I was that morning, I was in prayer and I was praying and, and I felt God all on me. I felt so consecrated. And so I, I, I got dressed and I put on, put on my little jeans and, 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 and so, and so when I put on the jeans, all of a sudden, Luella, I, I, I start switching and just, and, 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 and the Holy Ghost said to me, he, he said, he said, look at your spirit. He, he said, look at you. He said, I don't want you. Now, now, I didn't say it was a sin. God said, I don't want you to wear jeans because it wakes up your own nature. Uh, and God, it helps you to forget that you're a prophet and that you're an anointed woman of God. Y'all ain't gonna say that in here. And see, there are some things I can't touch because it tampers with my anointing. 
Did I say it was a sin? No, it isn't a sin. But the Bible said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that such so easily beset you. That means put you somewhere that you ain't got no business being. What? Sit, Sit down. Beset you. Beset you. If I were to define that based on Juanita Bynum one and one, I would say reset you. That does so easily reset you God is trying to set you but then you leave out of here y'all ain't saying nothing now let me just ask y'all this and I just want to ask this question right here why is it that we can hear God so plain in this auditorium but when we start looking like Buddha we can't hear God I, see I'm troubled about this Holy Ghost that we said we got that don't never convict you about nothing. And the reason why you don't come, watch this y'all. Now see, I'm gonna give you another example. I, see, the only way I can, I, can, I can explain it to you is by example. I got in my car one day and I was riding down the street and I went to, I was looking, I was driving and looking behind me, feeling for my tape bag. And so when I turned the car on, I couldn't reach it. I was just driving and, and, and Luther Vandross came up on the radio and he was singing, I was like, Whoo! And I got chills all up my arms. And God said to me, now I'm trying to show you that the Holy Ghost ain't goosebumps. Because if the Holy Ghost was goosebumps, then Luther Mandros just gave you goosebumps too. And then God said to me, watch this. He said the reason why you responded to what you heard Luther sing because that song and the spirit behind that song, it found an identification in your spirit. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But the Bible said, Jesus said, that the spirit of the enemy has come, but he finds none of him in me. The reason why it doesn't convict you, because it's still a part of you. See, when you really get washed. Woo, some of y'all ain't used to this kind of teaching. When you really get washed, then anything, I don't care if it's a subliminal message, you can hear something, and all of a sudden your spirit starts saying, Err. Err. It's like I can't, I can't, I can't digest this. Watch this, watch this now. I can't digest this because it is, watch this y'all, this is powerful. It is coming looking like God and sounding like God and feeling like God, but there's something down in your spirit that says something is missing. Now he said here, I gotta explain this to you. These are principle ingredients for the oil of the anointing. First thing it says, Darlene, it says, take unto you myrrh. And we look at that and say, oh, I remember myrrh. I remember Jesus. When he was a baby, they brought him frankincense and myrrh. But what we don't realize is that myrrh, mm, myrrh for women in the Bible days was a purifier. fluid. God, what are you saying to us in here? He said, I brought your hips in here today because not only do I have to purify your anointing, but I got to embalm what I had delivered you from so when you get back home and you see that thing, you don't respond to it because you've been embalmed.
Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Cause, 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 cause Junior and them gonna be waiting for you to get back home. See, a lot of y'all feel real good and safe in here until you see Mr. Man when you get back home. But I came to tell you that what God has done in your life in this meeting, he has embalmed that thing. Come on here, somebody. You go out to the graveyard and start talking about folk. Ain't nobody getting up out the graveyard to argue with you because they've been embalmed. That means this first ingredient of the anointing, it must purify you. Purify, okay, purge. Okay, let me just say this. Some of y'all, about five and a half, six, six weeks ago, I had um, major surgery. Uh, oh, it's God that I'm standing here. And uh, I, was, I, was, I was cut in three places in my body and the Lord began to say to me, he said, you know, you preach a real big gospel, but there come a time when you gonna have to walk in some faith. And so when I got ready to come here, I was saying to the Lord, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to, to, to preach Dominion Camp Meeting. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to preach Woman Thou Art Loose because one of the incisions still had an inch hole in it. And so the devil said to me, well, you can't go to Woman Thou Art Loose and preach like that. And, 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 and so I was going back and forth to the doctor. And, 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 and so the doctor was saying, he said, I, I see, he said, this thing just won't close. And so I said, I said to him, I said, well, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to, I want you to pack it. I want you to pack the hole with gauze, with white, sterilized, purified gauze. And then he said, I want you every 12 hours to snatch the gauze out. And he said, when you snatch the gauze out, you're going to snatch off something that is impure. He said, the reason why this wound won't close is because there's something foreign that is in there and the body won't heal until that foreign thing comes out. Y'all ain't said, see, I'm gonna tell you, and I, I, I hate to disappoint you, but, but a lot of y'all going home today and you ain't been healed. And you ain't getting ready to be healed until the foreign thing that is in your spirit has been yeah, God said, I can't close that up. I can't close the opening up because what you looking for? And I said to the doctor, I said, doctor, I said, this thing looks so ugly. I said, it looks so, it looks so gross. And my doctor said, you're after beauty and I'm after purification. See, a lot of us in here today, we're after, I want to preach. I want to prophesy. Some of y'all sit in the audience and say, one day I'm going to be up on that stage. One day I'm going to be right there next to Claudette Copeland and Juanita Biden. One day I'm going to say this like Cece. Oh, what, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to meet him at the edge of the platform and I'm out there. Just touch me. And you know what? And you know what God said? You have the beauty, honey. Listen, you have the vision. He said, but what I want you to do is get purified because I can't heal you until the foreign thing comes out. He said here, the first ingredient is myrrh, a purifying, embalming fluid. Read the Bible. 500 shekels uh -huh. and of sweet cinnamon half so much. Wait a minute, of sweet cinnamon. Have you ever seen fuck with the Holy Ghost and just as mean as they can be? Have you, have you ever had mean folk to try to prophesy to you? Have you ever had people that, that say, I ain't got to speak to nobody, just me and God. Honey, I ain't got to be full with, with folk. Honey, I go to church and I come back home. I don't speak to the, I ain't, I ain't in no mess. I ain't got time. Well, let me help you yourself. You can't grow till you get in the choir. How you gonna grow not speaking to nobody? Because your Holy Ghost can't be tested until it's been confronted. You know what? I'm losing my church. I can see it right now. You, you, you know what? I can feel y'all tightening up because you ain't used to no hard gospel because the Bible said that in the last days that they would not 
according to a sound doctrine. Where's your shout at now? Now don't get quiet on me now because I done hit your chief. So where's all them tongues at now? Now that's a good place to shout right there. When the Holy Ghost say you're mean as a rattlesnake, that's when you ought to start dancing and saying, God, get it out of me. God, I thank you because the woman of God that exposed that thing. until you nurse it and somebody take your handkerchief and run and give it to the pastor like it was theirs and the pastor make you sit down and shut up and at the church he asked you why weren't you prepared and you want to tell him but this was my handkerchief and the Holy Ghost says shut your mouth because you don't know what you got until it's time to give up your right to be right some of y'all argue about anything Sometimes God let folk tell a lie on you to teach you how to shut up. How you gonna go through a lie when you get up here when you can't go through a lie at your church? How you gonna, y'all ain't gonna say, how you gonna chase down gossip? You ain't ready for no ministry. How you gonna get mad and stay at home because stuff ain't going your way? Honey, there's a whole lot of stuff up here that don't go our way. But ministry is for mature people. Ministry is for people that's been blood washed and purified and broken under the anointing. You ain't ready for no ministry. How, how you think we keep going? do you think that all of us in ministry up here keep going because you learn how watch this to wrestle with the spirit of a lie but Lord have mercy you learn how to grab a lie around its neck and confront it and look right at it and praise God right in the face of a lie y'all ain't saying nothing you learn how to embrace people that you know done talked about you y'all don't want to go here y'all ain't saying you learn how to how to how to be kind when you know they just you just heard them in the back room saying something nasty about you but you gotta love them anyhow y'all ain't because i can't grow unless i love you Saying that because this is a hard gospel for the day. Some of y'all right now shout. You gotta go back home and make that thing right. Ah, uh, that's folk right in your church that you ain't speaking to, and you hear woman that will lose that in shout out. Take them tongues and let them lead you right to who lied on you and embrace them and say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because the only way I can get anointed, oh y'all ain't saying that, you can't get anointed until you've been lied on, until you've been talked about, until you've been mistreated. The person that you dislike is your anointing. Let me tell you how to fix that. You ought to go back home and buy all your enemies thank you cards. Y'all don't want to hear no real gospel. They said thank you so much. I really appreciate you because you kept me on my knees for eight hours. I really appreciate you because I never would have gotten the gift of healing had you not isolated me. I want to appreciate you for not inviting me to your conference because it gave me more time to spend with God. I you because you my enemy have anointed me let me tell you this I went through something in my church and there was 
somebody in my church that absolutely, positive, positively, absolutely, absolutely, positively did not like me. And we sat in the pulpit and the Sundays that I would come to church and I would look up there and see her. I said, okay, I'm sitting in the back today because I ain't fooling with no devil today. And I'm gonna sit right on back here on this back bench. And then the Holy Ghost said, but you are called to be a leader and you can't leave from the back row. So I would go up there and I would be crying because the service would be high and just snot running out my nose and she had tissues and wouldn't give me no Kleenex. And said, this is the pastor's Kleenex. I'm telling y'all the truth. This the man of God's Kleenex, ain't no. I would, I would be preaching and they bring me water. It was a little group up. And while I'm preaching, right before service in, and I'm still ready to offer, they walk up to me and say, you threw with my glass. I'm right in there and I said, yes. And I had to say, back down there. Back down. Back down. Because my old nature says, slap her in the next year. I'm going to go say, back down. Back down there. Because I'm going to be honest and tell y'all the truth. I'm not real sure, Cece, that my fighting devil is gone. God just ain't let nobody mess with me. <laughs> y'all ain't saying that. Oh, hallelujah. Do I have a witness in here? No, you ain't sure your cussing devil is gone. He ain't just letting nobody mess with you. Shut up. No, uh 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 uh. Cause you will cuss right now. Cause some of y'all just cussed last week. Some of y'all cussed somebody out on your way to the airport. No, God ain't here to challenge your gift. He's after that cussing spirit. He's after that fighting devil. You can't shout over that. Come on, y'all ain't saying nothing. You can't ignore that and prophesy. You can't look over that and preach. Woo! Wait a minute. So I said, mm, this is a hard place for me to be in. And I, I just, some Sundays, I just left church just crying. And the Holy Ghost said, you got to get the victory. And this was, this was back in 1996. And um, I was, that same year, I was on my way to Woman Thou Loose, the worst experiences that I was having in my church. He said, you got to get over this spirit. So one Sunday, you know, it was a real bad one. And the Holy Ghost said to me, your deliverance is in your power to make a decision as to how you're going to respond to the tactics of the devil. He said, now, you can fight them with carnal weapons or you can create the spirit of the anointing so heavy around them that it'll stop their demons in the track. And I jumped up and started shouting. Sarah said, calm down. And pastor was getting ready to go to his next level he was preaching and I, I I mean I start shouting all over all over the pulpit and the Holy Ghost said to me until you can dance in the face of your enemy then you don't have the real victory y'all ain't gonna get with that right there See, you need to go back home and find your enemy and sit right next to him when the service get hot and say, hallelujah, glory to God. Because what you saying to that devil, that in spite of what you're doing, it ain't my sister, it's a spirit that is after my anointing. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. It's not that person, it's the spirit of the devil that's after the God that's in your life. I 
came on here five months later to Woman Dot Loose, 1996. I walked up on the platform and uh, they set me down next to somebody. So when they set me down, they must have been saving a seat for somebody. You know, I wasn't used to all this. And I, I was here to teach a little class. And they said, the usher said, get somebody. So I sat down. So somebody behind me, I don't know, folks, somebody next to me. And every time Bishop said, turn around to him, I turn around to her. God gonna do. They be looking at me. And I was just a little happy camper. You know, when you when you from the church back home, you don't know nothing about this platform stuff. They didn't tell me that you're supposed to look dignified and stiff and just because you beyond all that praise and stuff. You don't sweat no more. You just you done arrived. That's for the little people out there to praise God. They didn't tell me that. Didn't nobody warn me. So I'm up here just sweating. Oh, yes, Bishop. Oh, oh. And everybody turned around and looked like, okay, she knew. She knew. Where did somebody school this one? Because she cutting up up here, messing up the platform. And they, 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 that, that year they had to build a little circle around me. You know, like they do in the Stone Run Church. So you wouldn't fall off the platform. But, but I didn't know nothing about that, brother. I was just shouting because back home we just used to having church. I don't know nothing about this stiff stuff. I don't know nothing about this sophisticated stuff. I don't know that when you done preached at two big churches and five white ones that you done arrived. Didn't nobody tell me that. around your neck. It's just time to, cause you up there now. And it's time for you to look a little bit more something, something. Well see, y'all don't know, I don't even know where y'all know where Hopkinsville, Kentucky is. See, I was all down in Hopkinsville, Kentucky with Mother Board and Sister Stacks and all them where they slap your back and slap you out until you come through that thing. And see, when you get up to me, when I got it, they said, no, you don't devil, go back down there. You ain't got nothing that's a pretending devil right there. See, y'all ain't gonna get, see, y'all can't, you understand what I'm saying? So see, I was used to coming out of church all sweaty and your hair all over your head. Y'all go ahead and keep y'all cute devil. But the reason why the anointing is resting on my life is because I don't care what I look like. I don't care what they say. I don't care what I got on. I care that the anointing shows up when I get on this platform. I don't want God to leave me. I said to God, you can take whatever you want to take, but don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Don't take my anointing. Let me say something. God said to me, don't get stuck. I'm talking to somebody. Can I prophesy up here? Holy Ghost said, don't get stuck. Can I just prophesy a few people up here? See, last night, last night, my sister, God was doing something in you. And I can feel you battling with, I know they think I'm shouting too much. God said, don't get stuck. 
He said, because he done brought you here. He done brought you to this place because there's a preach down on the inside of you. You ain't going to just sing. See, I'm going to tell y'all something. There's a breakthrough that's going to happen in this place. The Holy Ghost said today, if the pulpit get unstuck, y'all ain't saying that in here. See, we got to learn how to usher these people into the presence of God. Because my Bible tells me that the oil of the anointing, it flows from the head down. And we're up on this platform not to be cute, not to be dignified, not to say I've arrived, but to sing the anointing. To sing the anointing. To sing it out there. something here today. What he said, mother, what he said, what he said? And 250 shekels, uh -huh. and a sweet calamus, uh -huh. 250 shekels, uh -huh. and a cassis 500 shekels, uh -huh. after the shekels of the sanctuary, uh -huh. and of all no, 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 watch this, watch this, watch this. He talks about, he talks about calamus, and calamus is a tree that grows by the grass. Calamus is a tree that grows by, it's a grass that grows by in the rivers. It has to grow in the rivers of water, and it constantly grows regardless to its age. Now get the revelation in this, because I'm going somewhere with this right quick. It says here that the Bible tells us that we shall be planted like a tree. Y'all ain't saying that, like a tree. And the reason why some of us have no stability in God is because we didn't go through the proper channels of purification and whenever you miss a step you can't stabilize in God if you wondering why thank you my brother if you wondering why you backslide the day and in the day and up tomorrow it's because you missed the ingredients of purification and God can't plant you in mess Then he said, once you've been purified, once you get your spirit sweet, once you've been planted, then it's time to squeeze an anointing out of you. And then you know that this, now watch this, that this anointing, thank you Lord, that I have in my spirit is not a man-made anointing. I've known people to be inspired by individuals in ministry and the first time you see them in the mall and they're just having a regular day because I have regular days. Some days I just don't feel like being bothered. You know how that is, Sister Jason. Sometimes I just want to eat my soup. And folk nowadays don't know how to just say, God bless you, prophets, body. The soup is here. The chicken is here. You ain't ate all day. And they want to go and say, I just want to tell you, you gave my life. You really did. And I'm just saying, I just want to eat this chicken. Okay. All right. But wait a minute. I know you got to eat. But I just want to tell you. And some days you just in one of those melancholy moods where you just miss being a person. You know, all this stuff, but you just miss being an everyday, regular person. I wanna go to the mall. I wanna go to McDonald's. I just, you know what I'm saying? Some of y'all don't understand that everybody up here do CC know. You can't even go to grocery store. You can't go nowhere. And you know what, and that's the responsibility of having calamus and having cassia and having cinnamon because even when the anointing ain't high on you, you still gotta be sweet. somebody you still gotta love people when you get to the point that your anointing that you have has gone through these channels let me ask you something then who can hinder what God is about to do in your life because if man didn't give it to you Because 
when God puts a scepter in your hand, people may not like you, but they can't stop the anointing that's on your life. I didn't hear people say it. I don't like her, but she anointed. I can't stand her, but one thing about it, she sure know how to get behind that veil. I think she loud, I think she sweat too much, like some of y'all. See, you got some folks sitting next to you right now that, that see them been through the process, and that's why they jumping all over your pocketbook. Uh-huh, that's why they try to disconnect your weed, because they don't understand, they don't know how to sit down. All they know is that I've been through the fire, I've been processed, and excuse me, but I can't sit down on this because it's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. What I got, I got it in my basement. I got it in my car. I got it in my living room. I didn't get it from a man. See, right now in here, you can tell church people from God's people. Cause church people need the piano and the drums and the guitar to praise God. But God's people can start shouting in the grocery store. Good Lord have mercy. God's people will break out anywhere and start praising God. They'll praise him in the beauty shop. They'll turn your nail salon upside down because it's the anointing. It's the yoke destroyed. show you what you got. Turn right quick, mother, to Hebrews 4, right? Right quick. Turn this back. I'm going to show you something. Some of y'all that said, I can't probably don't understand. I'm scared to go back home because uh, I just don't know how I'm going to make it. I just don't know if I can if I can go through. Give me that. Give, give, give. Give me that living Bible. That, that, that. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. Where your Bible? How you go? Walk with me and you ain't got no Bible. It's my work. Better get your own work. Mother Dupree, I want you to read 4 and 12 out of this Amplified Bible because this right here is a good word because you got to understand what's in you because some of y'all don't understand what's in you. What you think you got is still in this auditorium. Uh -huh, what you think you got is all in this place. Uh -uh. It ain't all in this place. It's all in you. And you're the one that's putting it in this place. This was number the devil joined before we came in here. What y'all talking about? Honey, it's the anointed that's going to turn this into a church. And let me help your spirit. If your anointing can turn a sinner's auditorium into a sanctuary, what do you think you can do when you get back home in your kitchen? You better tell the devil, I got an auditorium anointing. Honey, my house, listen, it ain't nothing but a bedroom. When Book and them start acting crazy, y'all better do like my mama did. Honey, when we start cutting up, when we was teenagers, we was getting high, we was smoking, we was running all over the streets. Mama didn't come in there fussing. She didn't come in there saying, where y'all been? Wait, what y'all been doing? I sent something. Mother be in the kitchen cooking. She get through and tell us dinner's ready. We all come in there, looking all crazy. You know, I was at the Angela Davis movement. I had an afro this big, one green sock, one red sock. I was crazy. All the tops on, mother just, we sit down at the table. And when all of us be in the room before we go to the dinner table, talking about what we done did, who we done been with, and what we done smoked, and have we tried. And then when mother said it was time to eat, we all come in the kitchen. She sensed all of that stuff that was on us, and she didn't say, you know what, what y'all been doing? Mother would set the table, and all of a sudden, she'd go in the middle of the floor and start going, hallelujah, glory to God. God, I praise your name. And we all start looking, 
and all of a sudden we start crying because what my mama said is my praise is more powerful than me fussing because when I open up my mouth and I get the anointing in my house every demon spirit is going to come subject to the power of God oh y'all ain't saying nothing what you got in your mouth can straighten your house out you stop all that fussing when you get back home and start praising God and start giving God the praise and watch what happens Did you hear what God said? And some of y'all women ain't got no sense. Now, if you've been away from your husband all weekend, don't go home blaring one of the bottom's tapes and blaring Bishop's tapes because a man is already mad to love. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Now, how you really get your husband back after you done been to the finished anointing and got all this power on you? You go back home and cook him a meal. Oh, y'all ain't saying, you go back home and put on something cute and start ministry to that man. Don't go in there speaking in all them tongues. Oh, y'all ain't gonna say nothing in here. Y'all don't want me to teach this, but why are you shouting Emma Jean stealing your man? Y'all ain't gonna say nothing in here because these days it ain't about who looks better. It's who got the service. Cause you may have a bad shape, but you don't cook. You may have a fierce shape, but you don't wash no clothes. I ain't gonna see that right there, the shout is gone, mother again. Uh -huh, you may be able to speak in tongues, but you don't do the dishes, and your house is nasty. So why you in all them tongues? Ask the Holy Ghost to teach you how to clean your house under the anointing. When you walk in that house, get that vacuum clean out. And start going, sha da 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 ma sha da da ma sha ya Oh, the hope! Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Get in that kitchen and start doing, hallelujah. Let me get these dishes clean. Lord, let your anointing come on me. Stop praying for spiritual gifts until you learn how to be a good housekeeper. Stop praying to prophesy until you learn how to clean your house. Stop praying at all. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. You desiring spiritual gifts, but the Bible said that godliness, cleanliness is next to Talk about the anointing, pay your bills. Use them tongues to pay your bills and get out of that mall. Y'all, I see the Holy Ghost just did that. Use them tongues to give you some wisdom. When you go out of this meeting, nobody tell about how to have you out in the power of God. I ain't got time to talk to nobody. I, see, because some of y'all is strange. You ain't peculiar. How do you know when you got a real anointing? Because your anointing do let you speak to people. Your anointing do let you hug people. I, I, I just sent something on her. No, something is on you. You scared? You scared of what you got? Are you scared of what you got? Well, let me tell you what you got right quick. Read that Bible right quick. For the word that God speaks is alive. The word that God speaks is alive. And full of power. And full of power. Making it active. Making it active. Operative. Operative. Energizing. Energizing. And effective. And effective. It is sharper. Come on, it is sharper. Than any two-edged sword. Than any two-edged sword. Now watch this. It said what is sitting on the inside. Because God did not bring you in here to get emotions. Because if your emotions does not take you to the next level, riding on the go-kart of the word, it is a familiar travel. It is not the anointing. Can I say that one more time? Because some of y'all think y'all can get high in the spirit but don't read your Bible. You go high in the spirit on the word. The word is what takes you high. You want a high anointing on your life? Get some depth in the word and the anointing will show up. It does not operate outside of its word. God ain't going to 
do nothing in your spirit where the word ain't sitting in that place. What God does is your spirit, he, watch this, the spirit of God jumps on the inside. When the atmosphere is like this and it's charged, the anointing is in the atmosphere, let me tell you what happened. The spirit of God begins to move in the building, he starts seeking. And when he finds somebody with his word in their belly, those are the people that you see go, hallelujah. Because the anointing has found his word. And watch this, so you ain't gotta worry about whether or not God gonna keep you, because he ain't gonna keep you no way. Because you are too fickle-minded, he's gonna keep the word that's in you. So when he finds the word, you are kept by the word of God. So what God is keeping, he's keeping his word. So if you read in the Bible that now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, when it's time for you to fall, he's gonna find that word that's in your spirit and he's gonna keep that. And let me close. He said that the word of God, now watch this, because this is going to bless you because it blessed me. I'm closing with this. Watch this. Three months ago, this turned my life completely upside down. He said that the word of God is active, energy, powerful, ignited, it's operative, it's effective, it's alive. The word that God speaks, it's alive. And I went down on my face and I started praying because I said, God, there's some part of your word that I find, I find it hard to believe. And I know if I find trust in your word sometime, I know they do. I kept praying, kept praying, kept praying. He said, go over to Revelation. I want you to go over Revelation in that same Bible. Revelation, right quick and watch this. Now this right here, it changed my life forever and forever. And what I gave you, 1911? After that I saw heaven, yeah, right there. Now watch this, because I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you what you got, that the devil would, the devil would have never wanted y'all to know this secret. Watch this, read this, right quick. After that I saw heaven open. I saw heaven open. And behold, and behold, a white horse appeared. A white horse appeared. I saw this, go ahead. The one who was riding, uh -huh. it was called, uh -huh. faithful, uh -huh. trustworthy, uh -huh. loyal, uh -huh. incorruptible. Watch this. I saw a white horse riding and he was coming out of heaven and the one that was riding on this white horse, he was called faithful, trustworthy, honest, true, incorruptible. Now watch this. Keep reading. Watch this. Study. Study and true. He was steady, he was unmovable, and he was true. Read this. And he passed judgment. And he passed judgment. Watch this. And, and waves war. And wait, and listen, he he watch this. He wages war. That means the God that's in you picks the fight. The devil is not messing with you, the devil is hitting you back. Understand what I'm saying to you. See, understand when we start praising God to us, we're praising God like this. We exalt of thee. But when it gets to Satan ears, it sounds like na 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 na. Because see everything that Satan is doing. Now let me clarify what I'm saying to be a fact. Because if the Bible said that God is Alpha and Omega, then the devil ain't first. So he don't hit you first, he's hitting you back. Which means he don't have the last say so because God is Alpha and Omega. Watch this, them tongues in you is picking the fight. Every time you say, hallelujah. You praising God, but you saying to the devil, uh-huh, look at you, you ain't nothing, it's me and Jesus, now look at you, you been cast out, I done took your place, every time you start praising God, honey, you tell the devil, you messed up, and I took your place, and the devil getting mad at you, and he starts swinging back, but the more he swings, the more you praise God, oh, y'all ain't saying nothing here. Read that Bible right quick. And wage war in righteousness. Yes. Holiness. Yes. Justice. Yes. And uprightness. Yes. And his eyes uh -huh. blaze like a flame of 
Five. Watch this. This man that's on this horse, he's riding on a white horse. His eyes is blazing. He's blazing like fire. That means when you look in his eyes, all you see is a torch of fire. Read it. And on his head uh -huh. are many kingly crowns dying. On him. his head is many kingly crowns. Now I want you to see a picture. I want you to imagine a man riding down through heaven on a white horse. His eyes is like fire. He got crowns on his head. And the reason why he has crowns is because he went back through every generation and he took back every crown. And he is the king of kings and the lord of lords. And there is no other king beside him. And he stacks all of their crowns on his head. And he is balancing these crowns. Read it. And he has a title uh -huh, named. Wait, 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 wait. And he has a title. The man that is riding with eyes of fire, with crowns on his head, watch this. And that is steady, trustworthy, true, he has a title. Read it. Name, uh -huh. inscribed which he uh -huh. alone knows and or uh -huh. can understand. Read the Bible. He is dressed in a robe. He is dressed in a robe. Dying and dipping in blood. It's bathed in blood. That means he has fought every battle in your life and he got the blood on his garments to prove it. I'm not talking about no sprinkle with blood. He is dyed in blood. Get the picture. Eyes of fire, crowns of thorn, and a bloody robe riding on a white horse. Go ahead, read it. And the title, and the title by which he is called, by which he is called, is, is the word, the word. means this when the enemy comes to attack you when you get back home and you got the word of God sitting in your belly when the devil looks at you he does not see tight words from a page when the devil starts messing with you he looks inside of your spirit and there's a man that is riding with fire in his eyes and he's telling the devil you don't want to come in here you don't want to mess with me oh come on get somebody i can hear his hoofs i can hear him galloping he's galloping he's galloping in your spirit he's galloping in your heart he's galloping down in your soul and that's why you can say that no weapon that's formed against me is going to prosper because i got a man that's riding he's riding he's riding he's riding down turn around watch this something gonna happen in your spirit when you say this turn around and tell somebody there's a rider there's a rider in me tell them don't mess with me tell them don't put your mouth on me don't put your hands on me you better not mess with me because there's a rider and the bible said his sword has been drawn oh y'all come over here somebody turn around get out of your room and go and tell eight people because eight is the beginning it's new beginnings there's a rider in me don't mess with me don't put your mouth on me. Don't come, come on, here, somebody. What's on the inside of me is not just scriptures. What's on the inside of me is not just theology. What's on the inside of me is not just a Sunday school lesson. It's a ride. You want to make that rider, you want to make him fight, 
Is there anybody here got something you want to fight? You want the rider to fight? Now how you make the rider to fight? Glorify. Wait, wait. Because when you, see some of y'all be sitting there all cute. Have you ever been to a baseball game and you get there before your friends and they don't know where you are and when you see them on the other side of the room, you start saying, over here! you because if I wake this ride up y'all ain't saying nothing tell somebody don't let me wake him up don't wait 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 because you think I'm just a Bible toting believer honey ain't no Bible toting believer my Bible said the word is activated it's alive it's generated it's powerful and you don't want me to wake this ride up because if I wake him up he's gonna slay everything because the same chapter said it said look look God stepped out brother brother he stepped out out in eternity and you know what he said Darlene it blew me away he told the angels he said gather up gather up all the flesh and he said call for the birds from the north, south, east, and west because they're getting ready to be a flesh party. Y'all ain't saying nothing. When you activate the rider, his anointing will eat up the flesh and no flesh will be able to stand against you. Say yes! Look. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. But let me tell you this last little bit of secret right here. Now, if you want to activate the rider, you activate the rider by saying, Hallelujah! Glory to God! But if you want to put the rider to work, you go, Shandalabakosanta! Because your tongues is a language that only the rider Begin to pray in tongues. Begin to shout. 
tell somebody my life just got changed. That's why the devil don't want you to read that Bible. I said that's why he don't want us to read that Bible. Because every time we read it, we activate the rider. Come on here somebody. You better turn into a word of holy. You better go back home and read your Bible. Because every scripture that you put in your spirit, not in your intellect, not in your memory bank, but when you put it in your spirit, it connects to the rider and he turns into a mighty warrior down on the inside of you. Some of y'all said, what's going on? The ride has been fixed down in your spirit. 